Russell Crowe is going to be uh, the second superhero absentee him. father, yeah. uh, you know, Superman <laughs> and now Craven. Does Hemsworth yeah. want to put on the crocodile hat for the fourth one? <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather watch someone struggle with saran wrap trying to open up a cake in the middle of the night with no lights on. <laughs> it's like, it's just, just like wild how... It's like, The Shadow Crew Podcast. We need that, well, old Matic. <laughs> yeah, we all need sunglasses. Oh, no, this is Maddox. reading glasses, brother. This is reading oh, glasses. Shit. <laughs> so he can read my body language. So I can read. <laughs> so that hey. Godzilla, Godzilla Minus One has already made like $30 million of the box office on a budget of $15 million. And the, 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 what's his name? I think his name, the Japi, uh, Takashi Yamazaki. Was yeah. the visual effects artist, and I think the director. I want to get it. Right. Yeah, he was also the yeah. director, director, visual effects writer. He did pretty pretty much everything. He says he wants to do a Star Wars film, and it's ninety seven percent Rotten Tomato, critically acclaimed. We were just talking about last uh, episode about like what Disney should do. That's the type of guy you hand a friend. Like, doesn't give him a minor Star Wars character and let him do it on yeah. Disney Plus. Yeah, like also, I mean, Star Wars started as a low budget feature. Mm-hmm. It only cost like thirteen million, you know, in the seventies. But still, that wasn't that big of a budget for a major studio. Which picture. is which is why it was good, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because yeah. they were like, all right, let's uh, let's not overspend any of these little pennies and let's make a good <laughs> film. Mm-hmm. And they did. They did. It worked out too. Like, it out it, well. it, you know, what we need to do is a is a comparison on one of our casts where we compare like <laughs> how much was the budget based on like the rating it got in the theaters, mm-hmm. right? So like, how much was the budget for like Empire Strikes Back, and what's the rating, right? We I don't know if we would know that now, but like just in general. Right, because it's like, well, if you throw more money at it, it just gets sloppy and shitty. Cool. But if you keep a tight budget on it, it gets really good really fast. Well, that's the thing is like they're they're reshooting the Captain America film, like they're all these mm-hmm. edits. I don't know how much it's going to cost three hundred million dollars for this thing, and it's probably going to bomb too. Same thing that they did with the Marvels mm-hmm. is they reshot it a bunch of times, and because like, oh, okay, well, why don't we try this? Because obviously, this isn't working. <laughs> So again, like we've always said, is like you you know on paper or the script when something's bad, and this is not taking the the right proper amount. Look, they used to make films when the script was good, they made films. Now all of a sudden they're like, okay, we'll work on the script and let's just get the film going, and that's but, never a product of it really working out at times. Well, see, but they can, you know, they they were. Uh misled because they've got like robert downey jr working on him right where he improvised a shit ton of iron man and he made a bunch of stuff up and so it wasn't exactly what the script was jeff bridges said we never even had a full script when we started shooting that yeah but thing. see the amount of money uh, they paid for that first iron man movie yeah you can do shit like that when you have that kind of money but when you're spending 200 million dollars well, you better know. Which <laughs> it's like building a downtown skyscraper and not having architectural plans to it. It's just asinine. Uh, just, just build up. I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah, <laughs> that just that's that's never worked out, and they keep doing this on the higher now lower end films. You and I've been on uh, low end film sets, and it's it's a different. It's a lot of improvisation. You're working on situations. There are certain things the plot does change. But you're not spending that type of amount of money. Look, when you're doing a Tubi film for like 40 Gs, you better improvise because it wasn't in the script. But when don't... you're doing a 200 million plus movie, no improvisation. Just do it. How do you make a Godzilla film and good at, with a $15 million budget? I can't wrap my hand around that. Oh, it's like, easy. It, I mean, he clearly someone did it. It's just if there's anybody in Hollywood taking notes, it's whatever the hell he did. Like well, what that he did, should he be took, the framework uh, for future films. Like, look, if he could it, do that with fifteen million a Godzilla film, and we're not talking about the old nineteen fifty six, like where it's literally like you know Power Rangers set. It's it's like you would have thought it. They had a seventy five million dollar budget. So, well, kudos we'll see, to him, man. With Godzilla, it's it's 
It's not the hardest thing in the world. First of all, you don't have an actor that's improvising. <laughs> it's just a big dinosaur tearing up the place. Look, this was clearly, and I know we got the best of series coming on tonight, but this was one of the better films I saw this year. It moved extremely quick. I mean, it was a, it's a period piece, too. So a la Oppenheimer with an actual giant dragon in the middle of the movie, but it's it's a period piece. He does it right. The clothing, all the rest of the era, the actors, the um, everything was fantastic. It was just one of those films where I kind of thought like low expectations, high esteem happened from this. You know, yeah. it wasn't like they were throwing in like this was a legendary movie and said, well, let's throw in like, you know, a hundred million dollars. They were like, look, it's a little film. What's he going to do? He's going to either make a terrible movie or a good movie. Let's see what happens. He just so happened to defy the odds and make a pretty damn good movie, man. Yeah. You know how we, the best of series, we do, we did villains and di- and then we did, did we did like iconic, did we mention Godzilla in any of those? No, he was never on the list, no. Godzilla's no. got to be up there iconic. I mean, how many films has Godzilla been in? The, he was. Um, I think, think he, we had him in the movie think Monsters that. one did, because okay. I did have. Uh, I used a cutout of Godzilla with a tuxedo twice on two different podcasts. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so yes, I, I know that we've talked about him. <laughs> He's well, there to pick up his award. <laughs> well, uh, 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 maybe I, uh, Doctor Brantley, Mister Storm, maybe a retrospect series on Godzilla would be pretty epic. I, so, I, look. I, I, all 58 movies. I, I would <laughs> love to pick the best of them. <laughs> I know that I know that uh Dr. Brintley's not the biggest uh, the Godzilla fan as much Go as King I Kong am. in there too. Do all the monsters yeah. like the you, you know the yeah. yeah, okay. We'll be done sometime uh, in 2025. Uh, Just no, don't do yeah, the one with it's... Matthew Broderick uh in it. No, no, that, that, that won't that make sense. Well, that didn't count. <laughs> There's a new segment we're doing, and that would fall into it. But <laughs> oh yes, I can't wait for that. Oh, by the way, everyone, welcome to the uh, the Shadow the Shadow Crew uh, podcast. Seven on the Shadow minutes Nose later, Network. yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate uh, your support. Uh, we're we're we obviously we just jumped into one of our topics. We got a lot of cool things, including as Mr. Storm said towards the end, our best of series, the best films of 2023. A lot of bombs. But actually, some good stuff too. We were talking about it. I didn't. I didn't think there was that many good films. But actually, through the bullshit, you could see some good stuff. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, but first, first on the plate, just quickly, um, Comic Con, LA, for you comic fans and pop culture uh, aficionados, happening. I think all of us have been to various comic conventions uh, mm. in the past. I know. Chat, you and I were at a couple of years back, uh, pre-COVID. Anybody excited about comment? Is this like what, what? What do you all? What do you think? I th- I think uh, I don't know. Um, I think LA Comic Con. Uh, I remember when Regina started that, and it was in the garage at the convention center. I don't know if any of you went to that. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's because I remember the one that we went to was the LA comic book and science one that was at like the place that near where yeah. Shrine Shrine no, no, USC. Yeah, so LA Comic Con, uh, before it became Stan Lee's LA Comic Con, and I, yeah. I think they, they changed it and all that. Um, it was actually started, and in, in the very first one was like in the parking garage of the convention center. Oh, okay. No, I remember really? uh, Wizard World, which God knows we yeah, all had Wizard World was, yeah. Thank God they're not making Wizard Con. <laughs> there was, Wasn't there that was Anaheim one though? we went to. I think it was Wizard Con where it was we were there and it was sharing the space with like the volleyball girls yeah. uh winner. <laughs> yeah, it was it? Wizard it? World it? LA when they did the Wizard LA World. Marathon on yeah. the same yeah. weekend that yes. we were that and we yes. were like why is there no foot traffic well because no one can get downtown <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh should i remember there's plenty that. of foot traffic on that was bad. it there. was empty yeah. you walked yeah. into wizard yeah. world it was like a, a popcalyptic wizard world there was like just <laughs> you, no, you, walked, in, you walked in you walked into it you walked into it and everyone was like how the, how the hell did you get here exactly that's what it was that, that's what that's what it was like well have fun no one's in there it was like uh, the, I, think, I think it's like the walking dead comic con you know it was like it was yeah, like you were yeah, like you know stored into it like a convention center and the world was ending that's exactly yeah. what it was like yeah i mean i think i think la comic con has always kind of been 
one of my more favorite ones. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Chris, like you were saying, we had a booth back in 2019 um, when you could play with cards and no one freaked out. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I don't know. I've always liked it. It's smaller, but unfortunately, uh, I'm not in California. If I was, I probably would have gone today because today... Right, it's first through the third. So first through yep. third, huh? yeah, yeah. So it started today. Typically, I love the first, the first and the second day. And that's about it. Yeah, we've got some uh, some some people that we know that are uh, like you know there as attendees, and then some people are exhibitors. And uh, you know, every now and then, you know, I I love going to conventions. I think in December, I think it's just you know. I don't know. I think I know they can't put it in the same exact summer, but maybe if it was a little bit after like um, uh, the um, I get was it uh, wizard um, convention center. What, what's what's the one that's called um, that's in Anaheim that's run by San Diego Comic-Con? There's WonderCon. WonderCon. Wonder. OK, I think if you put it between WonderCon and San Diego, I think that's a little better. Because, like, you know, look, it's like, you know, we're, yeah, we're but, from California. It's getting cold in L.A. I wasn't driving to L.A., man. <laughs> I don't know if they have that money, though. That's a problem. That's if true, they put too. It, if, they, if they put it between there, right, mm. you're getting the L.A. Convention Center for, cool. like, $15,000, right, yeah. fifteen to $25,000. And then, so whatever your whatever your heads are cost, but that's, like, fifteen to $20,000 in off-season, mm-hmm, true, right? True. So if they, if, they wanted that, that. If, it's, if they wanted that convention center – like in prime time at the LA mm-hmm. convention center, they would be fighting with the car show, but that convention center goes up four X to rent it out. Right? Well, I can, I can tell you the one thing that, that does it in for having at this point, like, look, one of the main reasons too, it's, it's, it's like after Thanksgiving, you know, you kill yourself on black Friday. We were all hitting the, uh, the Black Friday sales. So that was expenditure yep. that was done. And then you've got Christmas coming up. I think it's like, it's just a, it's a terrible time to have a place where you're actually purchasing items from to be in the smack dab of the two worst expenditures uh, of the entire year, you know? Yeah. Well, I think the other thing too is not a, none of the big players are attending these events. I didn't see any. So they can't rely on the revenue normally they would have gotten pre COVID. Or even before that, you know, Marvel dumped in twenty five thousand dollars to build their old epic set and all these film studios. I don't know the strike, the strike in Hollywood. I'm sure that had a lot of impact on that, mm-hmm. unless they're last minute purchasing space. But that was shut down, so you probably don't have a lot of advertising marketing revenue. So I'd be interested to see. I'll check social media. We, yeah. if, you, if we know some folks that are going, anybody that's listening, drop a comment. I would love to hear how it went, but. Um, you know, I always support the the young the the young as, aspiring artists and the independents and stuff. But unfortunately, when it's the it's the bulk load of of that is that attendance isn't very high, right? Because there's no attract attractive thing. And I haven't heard any exclusive stuff. And this goes back yeah. to the Hollywood shutdown of like a premiere that people gravitate towards. Like if they were going to say, you know, exclusive. Uh, trailer teaser of the new Star Wars thing, or like you know, like the Avengers returning, but none of that. Like I haven't heard any buzz from the con. So other than some of the folks that you know, you know, in uh, Signature Alley, you know, a couple names that mm-hmm. draw okay, but nothing, nothing major. Well, if you're a fan of comics, this is probably the convention to go to because this is yeah, not probably big media. Con- you're actually yep. going to spend time with creators and things. that's the only plus out of it. But the negative out of it is you're right, is that you're in Hollywood's backyard and they have not outperformed what you're supposed to be doing in San Diego, which they have the opportunity. The studios, Marvel's out here now, DC's out here now. There's no excuse. So and hopefully it builds up a little better. They could have done something just this week. Uh, the mm-hmm. Mad Max Furiosa trailer dropped. Mm-hmm. So it's That's like, right. oh, we could wait until Friday and make an event of it. Mm-hmm. But no, let's just drop it on Wednesday. And the place that had, like, you know, Tupac's California Love, Mad Max, come on. <laughs> California yeah. Love. How's, every, how's everyone feeling about Mad Max, this trailer? <laughs> the trailer looked great. I don't understand the whole prequel kind of thing because it's like mad max and then it's like you know it's uh it i want to still see another mad max and i th- thought the last film was was decent well i thought the mel gibson ones were obviously better but i was looking for you know another mel Ma- uh, mad another uh mad max film it would be probably nice to see mel gibson and probably one last one too 
you know? So, you know, I think they got well, opportunity. That's never going to happen. Oh, now. no, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> not after we've had Tom Hardy. But the thing with Furiosa is that they can actually tell an interesting, unique, uh, brand new story, and it's not tied down to Max or anything. And so it's just a new story in the wasteland. And I'm cool with that. And I had no idea that was Chris Hemsworth until uh, I saw. I mean... Mm -hmm. He totally is a different person in that. So, well, if you're I'm surprised, you're I'm surprised he got. They, they, yep. <laughs> I'm surprised they got Chris Hemsworth. Like, I, that's you know, he's he's a pretty big name, but but they got Australian. Well, it's Mad there. Max. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, they, they and can George Miller it. directing it. Exactly. It's Aussie. It's an Aussie. Like, uh, I want to be a part of a like you know an epic australian franchise mm-hmm. so i'm sure that has something to do i mean think about it other than crocodile dundee it's mad max right those are the exactly. two <laughs> right Pretty so much. it's you know does, does hemsworth yeah. want to put on the crocodile hat for the fourth one <laughs> although Not so sure i'm surprised i've never seen hugh jackman Ooh. into like you know because if you thought that if they were going to replace instead of tom hardy it's like wouldn't hugh jackman be like a necessarily older version of mad max He's like, too busy playing Logan. Well, well, at this moment, but I'm saying years ago, you know, yeah, this dance card was open, brother. <laughs> so, That's true. So it'd be interesting. Has there any that. has there any but been in the history of like cinema that plays such a badass comic book character like Wolverine, but then you could turn on the TV and he's like singing and dancing? Like, and I don't like, know if there's really good. <laughs> like yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't like know. right he's in another like uh musical or something on hulu i saw that's coming out too so maybe the only other actor but he's obviously he's not american i think it's a uh, sir patrick stewart yeah i know he does, a, he does he's a lot great. of theater so he's, he's about the only yeah. person yeah, but he's not singing and dancing no no and, and what's his and magneto the same thing ian mckellen is not a singing yeah. dancer but he's like you know he's done broadway he's done mm-hmm. uh you know shakespeare it's just it's strange. I mean, kudos to Hugh Jackman. I mean, to talk about diversity in his roles, but it's just weird to see Wolverine and then you, he, he then he's now, singing like a Baz Luhrmann. Uh, you know, it's crazy. Now, now I want to see uh, like a Schwarzenegger and Stallone like a tap dancing duo bit, like you know, <laughs> old soft shoe routine. Well, they're gonna have to use CGI for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Stallone can go. Much. I'm not sure about Arnold. I think uh, Arnold's limping around, man. He's got some bad knees on him. <laughs> that that Terminator is finally the 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 oil ain't working on those uh, robotic knees. We'll get the stun man to do it. Just get my close up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think there's a there's a couple of them. I I I I know it'd be it. We should probably talk about. We talked about last episode, but Aquaman. Yeah, I mean, we we hinted at this could be a disaster, but now we're chat. We're reading; it could be even more disappointing than anybody thought. Yeah, I mean, this is a. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you know how you could tell it was gonna be a uh, a bomb is is a. Uh, it's because Aquaman two, I guess. Mm. Well, you know, I didn't see yeah. any red right. carpet events. I didn't see any publicity they couldn't do, done well, for it. They couldn't do anything like that because Amber Heard opened her mouth and everyone's like, well, I don't want to see it now. Yeah. Well, they still could have, you know, they could have presented something a little bit better than they did. It's almost think, like a little bit of fanfare, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think, think they spent some money on advertising. I think they're trying to just kind of like get the movie out, but like brush it under the rug just mm-hmm. so they can say like, well, we released it. And everyone's like, wait, what? It's because Aquaman 2 is going to be one of those movies where it's like, wait, that came out already? Yeah, yeah. No, it's do you think do you think yeah. it's because there's no big name on the bad on the bad guy side, like the black manta? He was in the last film, right? But like sometimes I, I he was one of the best things in it though. No, yeah. but I'm saying though, like, but the name power, like even Thor sucked the last one, but Christian Bale was a bad guy. So you're drawing mm-hmm. some money because people are like, oh, shit, Christian mm-hmm. Bale. Like, I don't know. I've seen this guy in films, but I don't know. His name is not big. Yeah. Is that part of the problem? Or is it people no. just like, I'm done with DCU? That's, I think uh, it, I think that I think, the, I think uh, w, WB just basically wanted this to bomb. 
like they wanted Blue Beetle to bomb, like they wanted Flash to bomb. Like, you know, you can tell when they put their time and effort and energy into something. And ever since James Gunn opened up his mouth and said, well, I'm going to do a brand new universe, you made all those characters obsolete. So, like, you know, what was the motivation for people to literally go and see the movie? There was Zero. none. So they There's so they basically much. wrecked this, and I've never seen it. And, you know, the way they're writing off movies and, hey, we're not going to put this out and do that, it's like the people that ran Discovery, like, the junk of the channel that it normally is uh, decided to put that same philosophy into how we should run motion pictures. And at this point you can just obviously tell they just did not put any care into this film. It it sucks, you know, because you're killing the industry. It's like in the days of having like terrible Westerns. And if you wonder, well, why is Westerns gone? And then there was the eighties. Everybody was like a renegade cop. And then there was so many terrible movies and that killed that genre. And now the same thing's happening. They're just putting crap out and they're not putting any thought and effort behind it because they're like, well, the last 12 movies made a billion dollars. So 13 should do it too. That's not how you run business. And Discovery has no business running motion pictures. They make the worst content on television with most of the reality shows. They literally have a show called Naked and Afraid, and they just put people out in the forest, buck naked, <laughs> with no supplies, and then they're shocked that things go right. <laughs> That's the new Batman. <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean I don't I don't know about this. I don't know about Aquaman too, man. Like I I I always watch the movies because it's like let's see what they did. Mm-hmm. But like honestly I mean, Alex, I, you you like nailed it though. Like I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you because I knew we were going to talk about this. I was watching Man of Steel mm-hmm. like a few hours before we uh, we got on, and like it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's good storytelling. It's not the best. It's it could be better, but compared to <laughs> Aquaman, like. <laughs> come on like the the writing is just better and man is still like and i think that i think it's just i have no as someone who's a massive dc comics fan i actually like dc mm-hmm. comics the the structure over marvel mm-hmm. but me too um as somebody who's a massive dc fan it's exactly what you said for me is why i don't care because james gunn just came in and said everything you know about dc i'm gonna make it better and and i'm just like yeah who are you going to find to replace like Henry Cavill? Because that well, that role is him for Superman, yeah. right? All he had to do was shut his mouth until first quarter twenty twenty four. You know, and that's and it. I, I truly, I truly believe so because, like every everyone was bummed out that Henry Cavill's not going to be Superman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they also don't have another Superman movie coming out, so it didn't matter, mm-hmm. right? And so I like. Yeah, well, yeah, they uh, just had that uh, Henry Cavill finally agreed to do that uh, Black Adam cameo at the end, right? Exactly. And so yeah. why bring him back? And then like two weeks later, James Gunn's like, oh, well, yeah, that's not our Superman anymore. And Which, like, by the way, was one of the best parts of that movie because yeah. you were like, oh, <laughs> shit, it's going to happen. And now it's like, nah, just kidding. No, well, I thought you uh, meant like when the end credits was rolling now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? Oh, and, we can leave. Yeah. What sucks is like you said, like Henry Cavill is actually a really good Superman. It's like a really, really good casting. I thought Jason Momoa is a good cat. Like, oh, I yeah. He's he's awesome, he's man. Fantastic. No, he is. <clears throat> and what's the it. sad part is like he yeah. won't continue. Like, no. if there's a guy that's like Aquaman, I believe it. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Is like, there's certain people where you're like, I don't know. Like, he, it's almost like he was born to be this this role, and now mm-hmm. we'll never see him. Exactly. By the way, who did it better, Aquaman or a Submariner uh, on the Marvel side with the Black Panther? Oh, who, uh, obviously, Aquaman. That was Aquaman. Aquaman. Oh, <laughs> what the hell are they? <laughs> uh, Submariner, what, what, what so bad. This? I mean, they it's not. Even... Re- Called it's that. not recoverable, right? It's like no, no, no. what is it? That is the last time we see Atlantis yeah. or ever hear about it. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? We're talking about open hybrid Island. open hybrid is bombed at Atlantis. We'll never see it in a Marvel film. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 what kind of kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Namor versus Aquaman. Look, Namor was one of my favorite Marvel characters. 
And I had waited for years because I know Universal had the rights and the whole thing with that. Once he said to release it. And then I heard that they were doing him in the Black Panther. I was like, well, the Black Panther is not going to be in the movie. How are they going to do this? And then I saw the Aztec thing. I was like, why is this one character that you messed up <laughs> it's like why is this it just made it, zero it, sense. it was like i don't even understand and then there's a whole nother kind of like if we go back into when people have like certain issues i'm like why would aztecs and wakandans have issues and that didn't make any sense well either just you have to whole- swim across half the world to even get into their area you know their neighborhood and so like- it was just well, they use wait, hold on, mystery, Doctor Strange. He, he transported them. You didn't see that; it was cut out. They cut that out of the film, and uh, then they then Super Mario had some warp uh, pipes that they went through. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. that. it was... um, it's sad. yeah, it is. It's sad because I think Jason Momoa is the fit, but it looks like uh, they'll do a full reset. Um, Although he he's going to be a great Lobo if that's what they're actually well, doing. That, Are they going to make that? Something. They're going to make Lobo, but I can tell you something. Under James Gunn, I, I have a prediction. I think... He's not going to use I, anything. I think, he get, I think he gets three major films, and I don't think it's going to go beyond that. I think I think he gets one, and I think it tanks, and they and they cut him. <laughs> like, I just don't think, I just don't think it's going to work. Like, you single-handedly opened your mouth and, like, trashed every movie that was coming out, and now you want us to go watch your movie... <laughs> You're like the kid. You're like the kid who shows up, and like you can't play, and so you take the ball and go home, and then come back with a different ball. Be like, all right, let's play now. Like, it's just, it's just not a, it's not a piece of work. I thought the greatest insult was when James Gunn interviewed the Ben Affleck about directing the movie, and Ben Affleck's like, how many, how many Oscars do I, do I have sitting on the shelf? And re- remind me how many do you have? It's like you need to interview me. <laughs> it was no. just one of those things that was kind of like it was. It was a slap in the face, obviously. Man. And now I know this is not on our agenda here, but I got to bring it up because we were talking about it this week about films, ones that should be made, ones that shouldn't be. Madam Web. <laughs> yeah. Come and on, Jesus the more and the Morbius. No director writers. Why? Why do these guys get? Why do they get second chances after destroying a, I, a character? And does anybody want to see a Madam Web film? By the way, no well, one has. No. Well, first no. of all, Doctor Britton and I would like to know uh, how do you get bomb... into that program? No, no. How, how do you bomb a first film and get brought back a second? Yeah, film? I distinctly remember and everything is that we were not called for that. Yeah, because I can fail you upward. Offer? You know, I can do. If you want your movie trashed, we can trash it. If you want it to be good, well, we can try and make it good too. Whatever you want. I got to ask you a question. (laughs) Money aside, okay, okay, because you know, money talks. Like it does. does. We all do. We do some things. But if you got a call Mm -hmm. and they said, "Hey, we want you to do a a a major film with a with a superhero character," and you're like, "Hell yeah, who is it?" It's in (laughs) Madam Web. I would you hang sick. up the phone or you keep listening. Like well, honestly, I would, li- I would well, no, make no. that deal. Doctor Britton and I would because after you've been on the Even, strike line, I'm saying, I'm saying money did. aside. Like I'm okay. just talking about we like had enough money if you had, to, if you were you, you got the millions okay. in the bank, well, okay. is that a character uh, you would expect? There's well, see, it doesn't matter. There's any character you can make interesting with the right story. Okay. I I truly believe that. So all these movies that are suck. It's like, well, you just didn't tell the right story with that character. And it's like, yeah, the studio wanted us to put this in. Uh, the This guy wanted this. Uh, the actor wanted this. So, you know, it, it gets lost. But uh, now, now, Chris, you'll understand you why I do most of the business with our agent and Dr. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> because you I just it. just accepted the job. What are you talking about? Yeah, but like I said, see, if the money was when he said, hey, they come in money aside, like, mm-hmm. There, there would have to be money. You would say, Madam Web, like, I've heard, you need to be telling me how many zeros you're putting in front of us first. And then I'll be like, okay, well, Madam Web, I, I think we can, I think we could do that. And then I go back, I call Dr. Ripley, like, hey, also, we got to do also, 
Oh, I don't know. Madam I don't Web's know. my favorite character. <laughs> I also don't know if I also know if it's fair for this audience because like we all know comics. So yeah. if someone says you want to do Madam Web, you're like, no, I'm just gonna watch that. <laughs> like no one's gonna go watch that. I, you know, I will say though, it had one of the best stunt uh, things where the guy jumps on the ceiling of the train or whatever and they're fighting which i've never seen in a spider-man movie as many as they've done what six or seven of them uh i've never seen that it looked cool well i know and that was the one thing that i liked out of that i know um um i think it's ezekiel tome is one of the characters but they mashed up two characters from j michael skorinsky's run uh, that he did with uh, John Romita Jr. And so, I, you know, look, I, I, I've never thought the Sinister Six idea was like a, a completely smart idea. When you're talking about now, if you were saying it was Spider-Man, Miles Morales, maybe Ben Riley as, a, you know, Spider-Verse, I, I could get three different Spider-Mans. But to say that we're going to build like all these villains and then you're like, well, no one, let's be honest and everything, aside from probably Joker, no one really cares about the villains. <laughs> it's like, you know, you don't put a whole entire two and a half hours devoted. Villains are meant for like a 15 minutes in here, another five minutes in the movie, then they die off and you get another. Well, like, how, how, how good did the Venom movies do? Well, they did, unfortunately, well. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but again, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but but, I mean, but they didn't make Venom him the like villain. A balance, though. Yeah. In those movies, though, he wasn't a villain. They sort yeah, of okay. changed the whole character. Yeah. yeah, but, but Venom is fair, like that. He's like half half. Like right? it's he, like that's exactly. Dying. And plus, he's so like deep rooted in a Spider Man universe exactly. that like Spider Man is such a popular character that even like the you know the people that are not vested in comic books, I think a lot of them knew mm-hmm. Venom mm-hmm. to some degree, yeah. right? Because he's popped up in various Spider franchises and cartoons exactly. and things like. Mm-hmm all these other characters outside of Joker, like you would really need to be a fan of it or have been a comic book reader to know exactly. who the hell those they were. Right. So. And, and and you're coming off of Morbius and then it's going to be Craven. Then it's man. man I'm That's like, another bomb. Like, that Craven is gonna going to just on? bomb out. Yeah. And then when they showed the dude that was, I believe Rhino, I was like, okay, that's when I just shut off. I just, just shut it off. I was like, okay, I just, it doesn't make any sense, but you know, hey, some you know, Sony's gonna uh, do what Sony's gonna do. Russell Crowe is going to be uh, the second superhero absentee father. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Superman and now Craven. <laughs> He's the guy that picks up the phone and does not hang up at this yeah. stage of his career. Bro. He he just tell me like hello, me I'll more. do it. Who is this? <laughs> oh, Geico? Yes. <laughs> I needed to change my insurance. <laughs> so, uh, him and Timu? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's, got a, he's, got a two, he's got a Timu slot now. I'm just waiting for the Matthew secret, McConaughey and Russell Crowe uh, team up for the next commercial. Yes. Cause all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Did you ever see, side, side note about Matthew McConaughey. Did you ever, did you ever <laughs> see the In Between Two Bushes or In Between Two Ferns? Yes, I have yes. watched it. Yeah. And yeah. Zach Galifianakis asked him, like, do you think it's sad that there's a hacky not being sacked? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he asked, uh, I remember he asked on the True Detective how much the weed, the marijuana <laughs> budget was for that <laughs> film, <laughs> yeah. for that TV series. <laughs> it's just funny. Because him and Woody Harrelson are, like, notorious yeah. weed smokers. So, like, yeah. that's probably was, the reason why that series was really good, actually. Yeah. That's the same one where he's like, like where you ask them if it's sad that there's a sack not being hackied somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, moving on to toys. We yeah. promise you all we'll get into the best of series, best films of 2023 coming up in just a few minutes. Um, but uh, lots of lots of toy stuff. So I'll pass it to some of our resident toy experts and Mr. Storm and Chet and talk through a little bit about what's happening in the world. I know, um, you know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of hot, things uh super seven NECA releasing some of these toys but i gotta i gotta be honest with you some of the stuff's just expensive and like yeah. you don't even like i it's hard to collect right i know that's the world right now is things are expensive but i think that's one thing that is preventing a lot of us and probably younger collectors from getting these really cool figures that are releasing yeah, no, I was watching the um, this week uh, McFarland had its uh, digital town meeting for McFarland McFarland Toys. And I, I give him credit 
on a couple of key things. One was he personally stated that, you know, look, I'm not a publicly traded company. So my focus is to not make the biggest profit off of everything. My focus is to basically, you know, try to make cool things that are like, you know, the fans can actually afford. And that actually made a little bit more sense of how he stated that because, yeah, he doesn't have a corporate board that's telling him to run up the price and, hey, I need this stock option and we need this amount of money at the end of the year or this quarter. You know, he's doing everything from the standpoint of what's cool to make, but also what's going to make me a profit. So that's a little bit different. When I'm starting to look at um, like the the pricing now, it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Now, look, there's certain aspects where I'm like, like NECA, I think NECA can command the pricing they're asking for. Number one, they're packaging, they're packaging fantastic. Their figures are usually a little bit more oversized than the standard figures that they're pricing. Super yeah. 7, I, um, I'm starting to have problems with because <laughs> other than the Thundercat line and maybe a couple of TN, TMNT, some of their stuff, like the old line stuff that they're talking about, uh, that they've been doing, and they're saying that they're going to go and do the Real American Hero old line and do it to scale of, of Hasbro. Well, the first thing I started thinking was, well, shit, this is going to probably be about 30 40 bucks. And then the, the, the CEO was said, no, it's going to be $20. Look, I remember going in and paying under $5 for a Joe figure in the 80s. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm playing for classified six inch, more accessories. That's about 22 to 24 Super seven figures are normally over about thirty five to fifty bucks. It's it's just it's too ridiculous. How are you going to get younger fans? You're selling these to adults. You're not selling these to kids because no kids walk in the store with fifty bucks and like, hey man, you know I really want that uh, you know that Thundercat. Like you know it's it's it doesn't make sense. They're hurting the industry by trying to do the cash grab now. Yeah. I mean, they, they do the cash grab with the, with the reaction line too. Like mm -hmm. I remember I bought, I thought uh, I was at, I was at target and I, I was like in the back and they had this like reaction old school, like Raphael figure. And like, I was like, cool. I didn't see a price on it. Just grabbed it, went up and bought it. And then when I left, I realized that that was like way too much money for what I had spent. <laughs> and it was, and it was like, it was twenty dollars for the reaction figure that I mm. think doesn't have very much articulation. It's still in the Not packaging. I, I kept it, but if you think about it in perspective, and that's like that's like a what is that? Those are like six inch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's six inch, and for literally, let's see, I paid twenty, and the average NECA figure is like thirty four. Mm -hmm. But the quality difference between oh, the, amazing on those. The, the the jump and and not mm -hmm. even just not even just the reaction figures from Super Seven, mm -hmm. like I I love the ideas Super Seven has. I do exactly. But some of the some of the ones I'm getting like they just they're they're the quality's not there. Best action's pretty good. Best action toys is good. Um, I I don't know. I said, I was shocked. I saw like four horsemen and they had a line of like, a, I don't remember the name, but I saw them at like some of the, um, the uh, conventions, the toy conventions. And they were had like one or they had this like this, um, like a, a bear and the character or something. And then I saw the pricing on it and I was like 300 bucks. <laughs> like some of the pricing, it's just, I think that they're, they're, they're they're hurting it. Look, I know we have the has the has labs, we have the Marvel creations, the Super Sevens, and everything. You know, I I really think that if they don't really start curbing their thoughts on pricing, they're gonna do exactly like the way the movie industry right now is having a little bit of recession. The toy industry is gonna have a major recession coming up if they don't start thinking about like you know like let's like McFarlane. I think McFarlane will weather this storm and he will be fine. Because, you, like, again, like you said on this channel, I mean, I'm looking for things for five, ten, fifteen dollars. You know, that's what I think that I want to put in the hands of people that have it. I intentionally try to keep the price low when you're working for your corporate overlords and you're like, you know, hey, man, you know, third quarter is coming. We got to have a ten million dollar increase from the last quarter. Well, you're passing it on the fans. How long? Again, we've seen. Marvel Creation, how many times this year did none of their stuff go through because they were yeah. way overpriced? 
a lot of the Marvel uh, Legends line that they did for the Haslabs didn't go through. Uh, you know, you start looking at Super 7 on Black Friday. Chet and I was both talking about how many things I saw on Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth that were all discounted, like down to like 10, 5, like, you know, hey, yeah. let's just get this crap out the door for Super 7. They're not thinking about this, man. And how much stuff have you been seeing pop up on alleys and Ross with that stuff too? Oh, so so many. Well, that's that's the that would be my strategy, unless it's going to be like some limited edition run of a figure that there's no way it's going to wind up in these like you know discount retailers. Wait, I mean this this past week they got drop shipment Whoa. of about thirty different McFarland figures that normally would run anywhere from twenty to twenty five dollars. For an average price of six, seven dollars. Like, we'll see, you could, no, like no, that's no. the new McFarland stuff, all the DC stuff, plus some of the, like the the license and stuff, like the Disney Mirrorverse, the uh, the Witcher series. Like it's crazy. I, you know, I, I shared last week the Star Wars mm -hmm. um, Black series line, or the 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 other the Star Wars. I, I forget what the other one is where they like repop the figures from. I forget what that's that line is called. Five, six dollars. Like, yeah. why would you spend twenty, twenty five dollars? Unless it's like a specialty figure or something like that. So um, yeah. That's it. They're definitely overpriced. I will tell you one thing that I appreciate with some of these these things that you know we're talking about Haslab, but some of these like crazy uh hot toys or jazz ink figures. I know we were sharing that. Um the, the bat oh, wing, the one Lord. six scale. <laughs> I would, I would buy that. To me, heartbeat. that's like okay. That's like uh, you're you're displaying that if you got mm -hmm. the room. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where you spend the money, right? It's like, but for like yeah. toys that articulate, you're supposed to like play with. I don't yeah, see where you're no, spending the money, no. but well, I, even I, with I need that, that bat wing, by the way. No, did that you that see way. that thing? That's like that's like a damn uh that's like a dining room table. Oh, I, man. Yeah, I watched I watched a, I watched a, an opening of it. I watched someone open it up. That thing was, was like, amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably buy that thing and hang it in my office. Like like I saw the McFarlane and Batwing that they came that you could put on the on the wall oh, and everything. That damn thing's as big as that damn case back there. The shit, the guy was dead. And literally, he looked like he was five feet. The damn thing was bigger than that. I was like, where the hell are you displaying that at? The McFarlane one. No, the uh, uh the, uh, about the jazz, jazz ink. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. was yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, that's yeah, it's four hundred bucks. Well, no, but that's they, the first time it's something looked like for four hundred dollars that you're like, yep, that's four hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, and everything's yeah. magnetic on it. Like you put it out, the wings snap in the magnetic. The zombie guns are magnetic. The balloon cutters are magnetic. It's like, but you, you do have like, to I build see. your own bat cave. Oh, shit, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I got a 3D printer. I'm just gonna print my own back. <laughs> uh, you know what? That the Hot Toys DeLorean is pretty badass. Too. Oh yeah, all the details yeah. associated with yeah. that one too. But like, see, they're clearly stuff. marketing their stuff to like adults. They're like, mm -hmm. look, man. You know, I I've never seen a hot toy that was like, oh, this is a twenty two dollar hot toy. No, twenty two hundred. Like they know it's like they when they sit sit and tell you that there's a credit card plan with fifteen payments and shit with zero interest. That's not the same as Super Seven or some of these other guys price gouging the little dudes on the market and everything. Those are like like if I if we all had the bucks, I know we would be seeing a DeLorean sitting right behind Dr. Brentman right now. You know, I, mm -hmm. I certainly know that. But that the makes DeLorean, yeah. That makes sense. That stuff's those are collectibles more in the way like when you see all the um sideshow um uh sculptures. You know, that's that's not for an faint of heart to get into. Those things are costing a little, but the displays are different. But when we're looking at some of these smaller chains, it's like you guys are bleeding out the the market that you need to actually keep getting into the stores because let me tell you yeah. something, the last year in toys was probably one of the best years, but I've, I've been, everyone I'm talking to, and again, I'm supposed to go down to this SoCal Joe Fest and I've talked to a couple of dudes, and they're like, man, I, I just don't have any damn money because I was bleeded out all year long to spend anything at the show. And I'm like, that's what the reality is that you've, you've gutted it so much in the beginning of the year now that now the regular guys are like, I'm just out of cash, and they're still dropping pre-orders all the time now. Mm-hmm. I think what you failed to mention is uh, there might not be a DeLorean replica, 
But uh, there's a there's a ten thousand dollar nineteen thirty four Duesenberg that Indiana Jones <laughs> drove with short round and double of doom behind him. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> that comes up on buying that for you, Doctor. It's an investment, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of films, it is now time to get into oh, our um, best of series, the best films of twenty twenty three. It was a little bit more challenging and difficult than we had hoped, but. There are some good stuff, so let's jump right into it. Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Yeah. Entertaining. It was a heartfelt story. Illumination's doing some of the best work. I don't know if that migration film's going to do well, but... Uh, I think it'll do well. I think, it'll, I think yeah. it will. It's a holiday yeah. movie. It's the only animated film I, that's coming out after that wish bomb that Disney just put out. So it's going to it's gonna kill yeah. it. I mean... Make money. Although, you know, the one thing while we're talking about the best of, uh, Netflix dropped a um, The Monkey King, and it was a 3D animated film there, and my nephews were watching it, and I watched it. That was pretty damn good, too. And yeah. it was not talked about at all, but it was a really good movie. Adam Sandler did a Netflix one, a, a lizard, I think, Leo. I or saw Leon that, too. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Man, yeah. he's well, making Adam, a shitload of money on the uh, animated side. Adam Bill Sandler. Burr's in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mario Brothers for sure, and yes. Jack Black, Jack Black, man, he crushed Bowser. Like he, he, he did. did such an yeah, amazing job. He That's did. the guy you want to play. But I think, I, yeah, I think that movie was so good because they didn't have anything to go off of. Yes, uh-huh. so they they just wrote it, and these but, were all. Yeah. And but they, they took all, all the best people. aspects of the movie, though, because they, they were all Mar- they were all Mar- people that Mar- loved Nintendo. Mm-hmm. They all played Nintendo. You can hear it; like it's all their like favorite things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's just like. This is good. And a little side note, too, it goes along with the Mario releases. Like, one of the more fun Mario games I've played is the new one that they just released. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's like, it's the same R- like, RPG. It's the RPG one, right? Or no, it's a. Uh, no, Wonderland. That they're, Wonderland. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, Wonderland. Yeah. Cool. Well, Mario for sure. Yeah, uh, most definitely. Uh, what else I, we got? I love Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. I know Dr. Brentley <laughs> thought it was so-so, but I thought it was probably one of the more entertaining and enjoyable, probably because I know it's getting to the end. <laughs> so this is pretty much But I he's thought. He's filming Tom, another he, one. Yeah, he's yeah, filming part like, two. Part two. <laughs> part two. Flying from buildings, and yeah. I saw like that clip of, he's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's. I give him, like, his dedication, I will give him credit for because the stuff that he does and the stuff that he puts his director through is probably, and his, the insurance provider is probably the most heart wrenching stuff you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I would hate to be that insurance guy. It's like, you want to do what? Oh, God. Oh, I should not be. Oh, you're going to have to pay a lot on this premium. <laughs> Yeah, I would say uh, John Wick 4. God, does, yeah. Do they do a bad John Wick? <laughs> now, I will say this was my least favorite of all the other John Wicks, but it was still a great movie. It was just a little slower paced than all the others, and it didn't really pick up until towards the end. Well, I think because they initially, Keanu Reeves probably thought this is my last one. <laughs> then they were like, "No, it made too much money." Just like they won't let John Wick go until he starts getting to the John McClane level of where the, the <laughs> box office starts dropping. Then they'll stop making them. Well, when John Wick goes to uh, Russia to get his son mm-hmm. out of trouble, that's then we know we're in trouble. When, when he goes to Russia done. with love, <laughs> that's right. As long as Ian McShane's still alive, keep making those damn films because he is just as important to that franchise as Keanu Reeves is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say uh, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I did not think it was going to be a good film because I was just Michael Mann or, or Michael Bay and the whole thing. This was probably one of the most refreshing Transformer movies since the first one, I thought. It had a, an interesting storyline. The actors were good. You cared about the characters this time around. It didn't seem like they rehashed anything. I thought it was one of the better uh, 23 films. I was pleasantly surprised at how good that film was. It had probably one of the best bad guys it of did. the Transformers films. It did. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice final send-off. And this one uh, actually like tore me up like not even 10 minutes into it because the cruelty to animals is very uh, heart-wrenching. And, yeah. you know... 
it, it is tough to get through, but it is very well done and it makes you instantly care about those people, you know. They they just did an interview, I think yesterday or two days ago with Bradley Cooper. I think I was on some somebody asked him about playing Rocket and how and he said when he was filming that, he was doing the, the voices and he was reading it. There's that scene, if you recall, where like Rocket like screams out because his friend gets killed. I forget what. And he said like he like got crazy emotional because he was thinking about some of the stuff that's transpired in his life. And he was like, cr- like crying when he read the script and it was like, he was like, holy shit, this is like, if this was live, a- it's live action. But if he was playing this character, like reading this and he was just saying that was like one of his favorite characters to play ever. And I'm like, it's so funny, the CGI raccoon, but that's how good the script was. Like, was like if it wasn't a CGI raccoon, I'd get an Oscar for this. <laughs> he probably would have. <laughs> probably would have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the Guardians films, which again gives you hope that James Gunn could potentially yeah make a good DC stuff. But that's no right. Tell mm. um, we got to get Barbie and Oppenheimer out of the way. Oh right? yeah, like most those, definitely. You know, Barbie Dominion was a talks. great movie. I have to say, it was a little long, but it was very funny. Uh, very, I don't know, well done. I would say that the great living actor, greatest living actor of his time right now, Mr. Denzel Washington. Mm-hmm. Because oh. Equalizer 3 was on pace. It was a great film. Like, wow. I'm like, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we get another one. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, Training day two. <laughs> I think I think he'll continue to make those things. I think we'll he's see. on his little niche of being an action guy. Like, they make money, uh, decent budget. Yeah, people, um, people like those. I mean, for me, I watch Equalizer, mm-hmm. like, all, any of them, and I just look at it. I'm like, oh, these are kind of basically like the new Bourne movies. They're fantastic. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're like fan, like the the Jason Bourne movies were all fantastic. They were just like sit back, watch the movie, figure it out. Then they put one movie in there that did make sense, and then you just go back to the regular movie. But Equalizer but, one, two, and three, like I watched it, I was like, I could see this continuing to go. Like it's great. But isn't it also? It feels like those like late 80 early 90s revenge action yeah. films too it's fantastic like the the steven seagals and the chuck nor like those like so it's like good good action sequences good acting but it's like you want to see a guy like get his revenge and you don't mm-hmm. get too many of those films nowadays so True. um i mean that's the reason why i like man on fire with denzel like he's just so good in like getting revenge and being a freaking badass so and cobra yeah, okay. cobra is another one that <laughs> here we go it's <laughs> The uh, right, the, the right. standard Cobra reference <laughs> on the podcast. Sorry, my bad. Just you know, no, it's good. I haven't pulled out the Cobra trailer in a couple of casts, so you know, <laughs> yeah. Stallone is. Cobra, the strong arm of the law. I, love I just love that his last name is Cobretti. Yeah, <laughs> that's the reason why they call him Cobra, short for Cobretti, versus just like they call him Cobra because he's. I wish like, I could change my like Xbox name. <laughs> Chet Cobretti. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that's coming. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Well, I know uh, Dr. Brentley thought one film was a little bit better all year long that uh, he forced me to watch and everything is that, but uh, no, it, it doesn't have a Jones in it. It's not this it. one. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was probably one of the most out of the way. I did not think that I would watch something like this. That I absolutely could not pull myself away from the screen. That and, and Five Nights at Freddy's, like my goodness. I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. Both those movies were fantastic. Like, like who would have known? Watching <laughs> Cocaine, <laughs> yeah, watching Cocaine Bear, realizing it's true events is like fantastic. <laughs> and hey, then, here we go. Here we go. If somebody asked me how bad was filmmaking in 2023, <laughs> I'm gonna say the top films were Super Mario Brothers, Cocaine Bear. And Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> that should tell you what filmmaking was in 2023. But you know what? I 
just from looking at the trailers and with all the big potential films we had all year long, it's nice to see some of the smaller movies that didn't have the box office those did <laughs> do extremely well because then that helps them take chances on yeah. films that are not necessarily the bigger icon films. And like, again, Cocaine Bear was like from the minute you turned that on to the minute you left and the so all the other iterations of it and shit from Cocaine Shark to oh, think, Cocaine great. Crocodile or something. I think it was like, <laughs> or was it? They had so many ones that just popped up that you saw that were like, okay. They were like, get on the cocaine trail. Definitely like, not the same budget. Cocaine no, Shark was no. unwatchable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? Uh, you know what film was actually really good. It was it was uh, Netflix. Is uh, oh no, I, Apple TV. I think Apple Plus. Uh, Tetris. Did you all see Tetris? I loved no, that I movie. Didn't see that movie yet. Oh, no. it's so that good. Was, that's fantastic. It's Apple yeah. TV. It's it, good. It's uh, it's fantastic. It's uh, Taron Egerton. The uh, the you know the guy's been, but it's literally a true story based on a true story of like how the game Tetris was. Oh, okay how it came to him and it's not what you think mm-hmm. it's no. like it's it's it's, it's it a crazy wild. story like this it was it was um made in russia in the in the 80s and this guy has to go to russia and get it and bring and just like and the craziness team, but, yeah i had no idea i'm playing this game when i was like you know six years old mm-hmm. and i'm like holy shit this is what this guy did to get tetris on game boy I'd recommend it. Actually, really good film. One of the few that was like a on on uh, on Netflix or on some streaming service that I would yeah. say is one of the best. Now, of course, we talked about this earlier in the cast, but the Godzilla minus one I thought was probably the <coughs> best special effects film I saw all year long, which had the lowest special effect budget out of a, damn near every film on the entire list. But which, it, by the way, storyline man, super uh, super seven. Has a very good looking Godzilla. I have seen that. I have seen it. It's eighty five bucks. It. It looks I, know I, saw it. I, I, I know I might get sh- shit for this, but actually, I watched this in the theater with my daughter. Puss in Boots was actually a oh, really no. good film. No, no, yeah. it was really to, good. It was probably one of the best and funniest <laughs> yeah. films I've seen all year. I didn't watch it. I wanted to. Oh no, it's it's really good. Like mm-hmm. super well done. One, I'm surprised that you know a lot of people gave it a lot of crap, but it was a, it was a lot better film. It seemed like it took a studio back to the way it used to do movie. Elemental was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was really enjoyable for adults and children, and I just thought like, wow, this was actually it seemed like old school Pixar, like you know filmmaking and. Uh, Gran Turismo. I know it didn't do that well in the box office, but it was it. a it was a better film. Than I thought it was going to be. It's hmm. it's one of those films that if you haven't seen it this year, watch it before the end of the year. It's worth the watch. Now I don't know how you know whenever you see it's based off a of true event. Some guy plays Gran Turismo and they really put him on a racetrack. Uh, yeah, but they did crazy. have real footage. But I don't know how successful. Or how, you know, I didn't. No, it, it, it. every no that that whole that whole thing is is all true. Okay, and okay. and, and it, he was a very successful driver, and they got him because he was. The best in the world at driving on the game. Well, Literally, just like Cocaine yeah. Bear, it's exactly. all one hundred percent true. Exactly. Oh, I I didn't know that Neil Blockamp did Grand Tur- directed uh, Grand Turismo. Yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. Oh, well, that's well, why probably why it's good. It's worth yeah. to watch. Yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you right now, though. You know, as a little side note, I know what film you're talking about, <laughs> but my brain keeps going and going like, why is he talking about Grand Torino? Like no. that, movie, that movie came out so long ago, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh yeah, it's great. Oh, that Clint Eastwood Eastwood would reissue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what the hell's going on? Get up, my get in mom. my car. Yeah, I was like, talking about that. That didn't come out. That didn't come out this year. Now, um, I'm it surprised is no one said Magic number. Mike. The last call. It did Magic oh, Mike didn't come on. <laughs> No, 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 no. We have to talk about the number 14 box office hit of the summer, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. They dial, I, I they liked dial part of that Destiny. movie. And it, it was better than Crystal Skull. Yes, you like- no, yes, that was. I will give you hands down. It was better than that. I'm gonna I said this on the last cast. I think it's the best opening 30 minutes of any Indiana Jones film mm. ever. That's just my opinion. 
but uh it was entertaining uh, as i said i think yeah it was the good o- the openings right up there with i believe with raiders i will put it it's it's got a good opening but you know unfortunately it is one of those few films that disappointed you know by halfway through you're like okay yeah, it's like, pretty bad you know it, it, su- it hurt it hurt to be honest with you that's how bad it was <laughs> i'm surprised no one's mentioned fast x no. oh i love that movie <laughs> oh my god i love that movie uh, let me tell you these movies after the fifth one they just started getting more and more ridiculous Dude, to the point was... where it's amazing I, I love every bit of it because they're so entertaining. I didn't think that I didn't think they could top two dudes going to space in a Mazda Miata, but they did with Fast X and Jason. That wasn't Moore. That, hold Jay, on. Gonna, I will tell Maddox, you right. That's not that's not a Mazda Miata. Wait, what that, was it? That is a Pontiac Fiero. Oh, that's right. It was. Okay, my bad. Same thing. Well, you could put a body kit on that and have a Lamborghini. Um no, but uh, I didn't think they could top that. And then I watched Fast X, and and I will awesome. say I will say this: the movie is probably not the best. <laughs> but and I, and I say this wholeheartedly, not no bullshit, just one hundred percent pure. Jason Momoa's acting oh, in Fast my X God. is top <laughs> notch. Like the guy <laughs> nailed it. He embraced was, bad. Dude, that he he like he was borderline. If he was just a little bit more cynical, could have played a very good Joker. But he was like, when they go through and they tell you like the story of it and how he happens, and none of you are gonna watch this spoiler alert, whatever. But his dad is somebody that they you know blew up, and so he's he's like Jason Momoa is like trying to like <laughs> revenge his dad. But he is so delusional and demented that there's a scene where he's sitting there talking and he and he's like laughing back and forth he's like no you guys do whatever you want to do it's fine like i'll go get some beers and they pan they're, they're like pan in on his face and they pan out and it's these two rotting bodies at the side of a pool and he's clipping their nails while he's laughing and having a good time with them and i was like yeah dude you nailed it so it's it's <laughs> worth see, watching for his acting i but thought you were going to either say john cena's car in the movie oh, oh that or, was with the fuck oh. or the cliffhanger off the side of a dam with two tanker trucks having to outrun an explosion and possibly a uh, a flood which Good stuff if you're can't wait for fast, part two if you're Hoover fast dam. and furious that's the second dam that they jumped over because i believe in uh five remember when they flipped off a train into a dam down into a reservoir so oh, yeah yeah they, they're repeating themselves now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying, Jason Momoa's acting in that. It is. It's clearly it, the best like, thing in that film. It, it's it's worth watching the film to just watch him because it's nothing like he plays. It's like yeah. nothing like he's ever played, right? This guy's <laughs> Game of Thrones, <laughs> Aquaman, like, <laughs> scene on Apple TV, like, every girl's <laughs> poster child, whatever. Well, on. there's t- there's two that comes to mind for me. I think the Spider-Man one is a clear cut. Yes. And that thing dominated in the box oh, that was office great. for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm surprised no one's mentioned Avatar. Well, that's because well, that it's was not last good year, at all. <laughs> and that was last year. Yeah. Did it come out last year? Yeah, it was a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it oh, just was. That's right. It, came it was December. just so long yeah. that it just went into the new year. Yeah. For us. I, would also, I don't I would think also, it would have been on this list anyway. So I would no, also like matter. to add one of the best movie releases that hasn't come out yet, but just so we could have it on. Um, this podcast is the showing of Die Hard in the theater. That no, will officially that. Mm-hmm. that will officially be the best released movie of the year. Mm-hmm. But it's going to make yeah. more money probably than oh, it'll, uh, it's going to make me. Too. I'm going to go. I'm going, <laughs> and, I, and I can watch that shit on my Apple TV right now. I'm going. Yeah, that'd be oh, great be if Die Hard beat Aquaman to the that'd be funny. Office. That'd be, be funny. amazing. <laughs> Are we missing any? Any, no, any other no. films? I, I think get them all. It up. No, I think hopefully it's... someone's yelling at our TV right now. I'm oh, sure. the, I mean Dungeons and Dragons. We uh, talked about that. I mean, yeah. I don't put that in the best. I thought this was the best. It was. Not, it was enjoyable. Way waste. better than the other Dungeons and Dragons movie. Mm, no, that is. That oh, is what you say, man. No, no, that no. Is, I'm with you on that. It one. blows Jeremy Irons out of the water. 
Sorry. Let's put it like that. They haven't done a good Dungeons and Dragons from animated cartoon to films to it's possibly strange. maybe even the board game. It's about the only thing that beats it. But no, I thought that was probably one of the worst written films of the year. Oh, no. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was mm-hmm. funny. And, you, and I, uh, you know, you and I differ on that one, my friend. But you, but you guys write together, right? Yeah, yes. we do. Good. That's why speaking, ri- speaking of writing partners, you know what was really good is uh Air. Uh the Michael Nike, the, the Nike the Nike uh how they came up with Michael Jordan mm-hmm. uh with uh, Ben Affleck ben and Affleck, Matt Damon mm-hmm. uh, in that. Mm-hmm. That was really good. That was a uh, think directed Netflix or one of the streaming service, but that was cool to see how they became Nike mm-hmm. and uh their their pursuit for signing Michael Jordan to the first shoe deal. If you haven't seen that, that was pretty good too. So yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think we got a good yeah, amount of top films. I mean, we could spend four hours on the bombs, um, but that might be coming on some new content that we have debuting mm-hmm. on the channel. So stay oh, tuned. The saddest when we were going over the list, I forgot some of these movies even came out. Expendables four. That was this Maybe. year. Yeah. It did, was. did anyone oh, see out. it? I, I didn't. Know. Know. Was it no. awful? I watched it. Yeah, I mean, like the third and, one sucked. Was it better or worse than that? It's like probably okay. Damn, that same or worse. That's, that's all I need Jeez. to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I and so I watched it. Like I, so I love it because of everyone that's in it. But this one was exactly. like, here's a here's a problem. Is like I watched the first five minutes of the movie. Five, it's like five or ten minutes. I was like. Oh, I know what happens, and I wasn't wrong. I knew exactly what was going to happen at the end of the movie, and I was just like, waiting for it the whole time. You uh, know what's explosions? That's all I say. What's well, sad is uh, that movie. I'm looking at box office results. Did more than Marvels. No, the Nightmare Before Christmas re-release uh, <laughs> in October made uh, almost as much money as Expendables for oh, in no. the box office, <laughs> and that and that released October. Of this this year, so that's and these wild. are worldwide totals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Expendables four made thirty seven million worldwide. That's oh, bad. Great. Well, that's yeah. that's when you do one film too many, and you know they mm-hmm. don't know when to walk away from something. And yeah, that's clearly that. the case. So, you know? And uh, sixty five only made sixty million. They couldn't I, even I, get their own number. I, 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 that's it's like sixty-five million needed sixty-five million. Like, I couldn't. I couldn't get through that. I try. I've been trying to watch that. I, I watched. I watched it. I got through it. And but I can't, it was, I fell asleep. It was. The, it was. Let's put it like this. It's a when you, it's a hard comparison, but it's a better movie than After Earth with Will Smith and his son Jaden. But it's the same plot line. It's just there's a dinosaur in it. <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather watch someone struggle with saran wrap trying to open up a cake in the middle of the night with no lights on. <laughs> like, it's just, just like wild how like pure shit it was. Well, first of all, that sounds like another new segment we just yeah. created. <laughs> yeah. Can you open it? Yes, I can. ASMR. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, you would have thought Kylo Night Ren vision. fighting dinosaurs would be good, but uh, get, mm. apparently not. Apparently, uh, not. Kylo Ren had. versus dinosaurs is a big loser. Kylo yeah. Ren in the yeah. Star Wars universe was a waste of time. Well, right. that's true too. <laughs> oh, that's um, like a whiny bitch with a lightsaber. <laughs> well, with right. that state, it goes back yeah. to the time where I think we're going to roll into our sponsorship of the night. You guys always cut me off with this part. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Saran Wrap Chronicles. After that, there's we can't continue. I mean, that's yeah, we got to get to Mike. work. We're we're gonna put <laughs> yeah. some writers on this. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You're welcome. Let me see what the, let me see what the Morbius guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see next week when we're doing we have like an interview at Sony, and we're like, yeah, we heard your podcast, and oh, you good. and Doctor Brittley don't get the job. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will tell you, it won't be the, the the best idea. The best idea we had is when Chet and I came up with a, a series called <laughs> micro, Microwaving with Chet that turned out oh, yeah. to be someone else. And it was just yeah. someone that taught Chet a microwave food. You know, it was a series yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but so, there was, so then we recreated it and it was uh, microwave. Yeah, but 
that was cool canon but uh yeah. yeah that that when we were watching it i was like they really made this this is <laughs> really yeah. made how to microwave and how it to has microwave a, popcorn. Lot, a lot of <laughs> use like it's yeah. insane <laughs> yeah well back to our sponsor mr storm as usual, like I said, we like to thank Toys vs. Games in Wilmington, California. Uh, they, last week was Black Friday. Obviously, uh, they had a huge sale. Uh, they've got some stuff that's coming up over the last couple of weeks. There's, there's a lot of things that you're looking to find that you didn't pick up early in the year. and You don't go to the Ollie's. And you're not running around to the Rosses and everything. Check with uh, Toys vs. Games. They're on Instagram. Uh, they're our sponsors. We thank them so much. They're always gracious for it. It's Shadow's preferred store of all time. In fact, and everything, Shadow's been there so much, he hasn't been cutting videos. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's hope he's shooting some videos in Toys versus Games. So but thank them for being our sponsors to the Shadow Crew podcast. Awesome. And uh, as always, we got some new and existing content on the channel. So more Unbox with Chet Maddox videos coming very soon. I hope you all enjoyed it, including also a new retrospect Christmas editions. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Brantley and Mr. Storm uh, retrospect on uh, Christmas action movies. You know, obviously Die Hard comes to mind. Christmas must watch. And then some quick retrospect shorts, Christmas classics, Christmas animated. So a whole holiday series set to hit your channel. Super excited for that. For those of you invol involved or interested in the professional wrestling, WWE, some big news that happened mm. this past week with uh, uh, someone uh, coming over from uh, another wrestling organization. The most views in WWE history on social media, which should tell you uh, the industry is, uh, is booming a bit. So... Uh, we're excited yeah. to have uh, Tech Master Eric come and uh, drop a couple of videos to talk through that. So more to come on that as well. And then lastly, um, we have a new series that is coming out, um, and that is the Box Office Graveyard. So for those of you who are interested in uh, bombs, uh, we're <laughs> talking some really lethal bombs. <laughs> films that we've talked about in the past, but more. also... More than bombs. outside, outside <laughs> of outside of bombs, some films that you couldn't even make up that they were made. <laughs> and Dr. Brantley volunteered his time to watch one, and I'm excited to get into that. So please tune into that special. We'll be filming some stuff, but some really, hmm. really pieces of shit that you got it. You got it. You got you got to listen it's, to. It's, it's so good. bad. It's good. Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're we're still we're still working on what it's going to be like to do a live version of the podcast. So yes. don't, don't think that we forgot about that. We we know it's there. It, our choice of platform will probably be Kick. Uh, we're we're working out the details on that. But yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll see we'll see how that works out. Awesome. Well, as always, like, subscribe, comment uh, the channel. Please share. Thanks for listening and following. And until next time. We'll see you next week.